I want to look at a simple example of um, combining two independent random variables and looking at expected value and variance. Um, and we're going to discover something very nice about how that works. So here's the example. I play two lottery games. One is called Lotto Surprise, and we'll have L be the random variable that's how much I win in that game. That has the values of either two dollars or five dollars. I win. I always win something. Just to make it simple, I just wanted to. Not there's no case in which you don't win anything. Um, and the probability of winning two dollars is 0.6. Probability of winning five dollars is 0.4. I also play, uh, at the same time, a, uh, another lottery game, Mega Zillions, and we'll have M be the random variable that is the prize winnings for that. That can be either $5, $20, $20, probability of winning $5 is 80%, and the probability of winning $20 is 20%. So first, let's just calculate all the interesting quantities that we now know how to qu calculate. The expected value, otherwise known as uh, the mean, um, the variance, and the standard deviation of all these random variables. And then we're going to see what happens when we look at the total winnings. We're, the idea is we're playing this and this, and we're looking at the total winnings. But let's just go ahead and analyze them independently first, okay, separately, let's say. Okay, so E of L, that's just going to be 60% chance of winning $2, plus 40% chance oops, of winning $5. And that's a buck twenty plus uh, two dollars, and so that's three dollars twenty cents. Okay. Uh, the expected winnings for Mega Millions is going to be 0 0.8 times five dollars plus 0 0.2 times twenty dollars. So that is four dollars plus um, four dollars. That's eight dollars. Let me make sure I put the units in. Okay, those are both in dollars. Okay, uh, what about the variance of the lotto surprise? How much uncertainty is there in the winnings? Okay, you have to calculate the expected value first, and then you can use our standard way to calculate the variance. So that's 0.6 times the squared deviation of the answer we're looking at right now, the value of the variable we're looking at, minus the mean. So that's the squared deviation from the mean for that one. And then we continue with the weighted average and we look at the squared deviation of the mean for um, the other possibility. Okay. And let's see, I don't want to do that by hand. That's equal to $2.16 or 2.16. Okay. Now that's in dollars squared, which is kind of weird. Okay, and that's one reason why the variance isn't as natural in some ways as the standard deviation. But the variance is a very, very useful thing. It just comes out in weird units, that's all. Okay, now the variance of M, how much variability is there in the Megazillions game? It's very similar. 0 0.8 times 5 minus its mean squared plus 0 0.20 times 20 minus its mean squared. Okay, and let's go ahead and calculate that out. That's 36. And again, that's in dollars squared. Okay, now the standard deviations bring those back into nice units. So the standard deviation of L is just the square root of the variance of L. And so that's the square root 2.16. And so that's 1.4, um, let's round it to 1.47, and that's back in dollars. Okay, and then the variance of M, sorry, the sigma standard deviation sigma is the square root of the variance of M, and that's the square root of $36 squared, which is, interestingly enough, a nice number. I didn't mean that to happen, it just worked out that way. Okay. So basically the one the buck 50 gives you a rough idea of uh, sort of on average it's, it's a little more complicated than that but roughly on average how far away from that mean of $3 do you end up okay uh, <coughs> excuse me and notice that the $2 and $5 payouts are pretty equal probability here so roughly it's sort of half the time you get 2 half the time you get 5 if it was exactly equal probability 
you'd be 350 as the average payout, halfway in between, and on average you'd be a buck 50 away from that, either a buck 50 low with two dollars, buck 50 high for five dollars. So this is a very plausible answer. It says on average, roughly, you're about a buck 50 away from this 320. Okay, this one, uh, this number and this number says that on average you get eight dollars. That's much closer to five than than it is to 20 because you're more likely to get the five. But there's a pretty big variation that the standard deviation is six. And so that indicates the fact that eh, you can actually get pretty a lot more than $8. A fair amount of the time you're getting $20. Okay, so that's hopefully making those somewhat plausible results. All right, so now let's look at combining these guys. There's a, lots of cool rules for combining these, but the point of this video is that we're, I'm not going to use any of those rules. We're going to get a hint of why those rules would be true um, by just doing this very much uh, by hand. So what are the possibilities for the total winnings? Well, I could get 2 and 5, so that would be $7. Or I could get 5 and 5, and that would give me $10. Or I could get 2 and 20, that would be $22. Or I could get 5 and 20, that would be $25. Oh, let's put that in math mode, too. Okay. All I'm doing is looking at all the different, the four different combinations of what I win here, what I win here. Okay. What are the probabilities? Now, here's where it's really important that we're assuming that they're independent. The probability of winning $7, that happens, in this case, it happens to be only by winning $2 in this guy and $5 in this guy. Here we can use the simple multiplication rule. When two events are independent, me winning $2 in the lotto surprise and me winning $5 in the separate lottery, if those are independent, the probabilities just multiply. 0.6 times 0.8 turns out to be 0.48. Okay. Similarly, the $10 came from a 5 and a 5. 0 0.40, 0.80 is 0.32. The 22 comes from this and this, and that's 0.12. And if I'm really lucky, I win the big payoff in both. 0.4 times 0.2 is 0.08. We can check, do a reality check. This should still all add up to 1. Always, 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 when you've got a probability model, you should have these numbers adding up to 1. And indeed, this adds up to 0.8, and this adds up to 0.2. The whole thing adds up to um, adds up to 1. So there's our probability model. Now, using this new table, we can calculate what's the expected value of the combined winnings. We, we denote that by L adding, putting a plus in between the, these random variables. But that can be a pretty dicey thing. Um, you don't want to think of this as ordinary summation. In, and the book talks a lot about how um, there's some tricky things here. I'm focusing here on what's nice about it, but you do have to, I need to warn you, it's a little bit tricky. All we're doing is, is using it as, as a symbol for do this experiment, do this lotto, and do this experiment, and then add the results together. Okay, so let's look at E, the expected value of L plus M. Okay, well, that is going to be, okay, I know the probability model for L plus M. Okay, so it's going to be 0.48 times $7. I'm not going to bother with the units in the middle of the calculation. Plus 0.32 times $10. Plus 0.12 times $22. Plus 0.08 times $25. Let's just calculate that out. Let the computer do that. $11.20. Remember, an expected value is always just going to be in the regular units of whatever your uh, random variable is. Okay, that's interesting. That's exactly the sum of these two numbers. Okay, and that's pretty, as the book uh, notes, that's uh, thing. This is something everybody guesses pretty much. If on average I win three dollars and twenty cents by playing this game, and on average I weigh I win eight dollars by winning this game, how much am I going to expect to win if I play both games? It's the sum. And in fact, let me just give you a um, be a little honest about this. Okay, it the fact is that this works even if L and M are not independent. Okay. But that's only for the expected value. Okay. Yeah, for the variance, it turns out to be crucial. We're going to see something nice similar come out of the variance, but it's crucial um, that they're independent in that case. Okay. So let's go ahead and calculate the variance of the total winnings. Okay, again, just straight from this model, not trying to be fancy. 0.48 times, okay, I don't really need the time sign, do I? 0.48 times the deviation of this winning from the average total winnings. So 
But again, it's a two-step process. Don't try to calculate the variance unless you've already calculated the expected value because you need to know what that baseline is that you're comparing everything to. Here's the, the deviation of this scenario, winnings, the total winnings of 7, from the average winnings. I square it to get a square deviation, and then I start looking at the sum to get a weighted average. Okay, and then there's going to be 10 minus 11.20 squared plus 0.12 times 22 minus 1120 squared plus um, 0.08, this fairly small probability, although not tiny, of the big win, and then compare it and square it. Compare and square, it rhymes. Okay, so there's our standard formula, 3816. Okay, so let me put that up here. 38, now remember, that's in dollars squared, this weird unit. Okay, but here's where the variance proves its worth. Okay, even though it comes out in a weird unit, um, it's a measure of spread, which is certainly a nice thing to have. It comes out in weird units, but the uh, really cool thing about it is the variance of the sum here was exactly the variance of L added to the variance of M. Okay, so let's emphasize that. That's two point one six dollars squared plus the thirty six dollars squared. Okay, and so it's the variance of L plus the variance of M. Turns out, really crucial, uh, this only happens when the two random variables are independent. Okay, or it's very unlikely to happen when they're not independent. It'd just be an accident pretty much. Okay, whereas here it turns out that for any two random variables, the, expect, the expected value is sum. Okay, so this is a really cool thing to know. So I certainly haven't proved it by any means, but I wanted to show you that we don't have to take it completely on faith in the book. We can work things out if necessary by an example, and we're seeing that these variances add. Okay, now what about the standard deviations? As we've noted, the variance comes out in these weird units of, of the squared units of what we really wanted, it's like here, dollar squared. It's really strange to think about that. Okay, so instead of that, we're going to calculate the um, standard deviation. Okay, that's the square root of the variance. Okay, and so let's just take the square root of 38.16 to get the number. And that's six point one six dollars and eighteen cents. Okay, so on average you're going to win eleven twenty by playing these games, and some a good measure in the sense of standard deviation of how much uncertainty there is in the winnings is a little more than six bucks. So you say eleven twenty plus or minus six eighteen. Now that doesn't mean you can't get more or less than that. For example, you can definitely get more than eleven plus six. You can get twenty five dollars, but it gives you some idea of the range um, of variation. Okay. Now, is this 618 something nice? Well, the number's not obviously nice compared to, say, the numbers we had for the individual values. It's definitely not the sum of these two guys in particular. Okay. So that's really important. This is less than the standard deviation of L plus the standard deviation of M. And the book makes a good point that that actually is something that you should that is somewhat expected. That these things are independent of each other. The amount of variability of the of adding two independent things, there should be some sort of cancellation. I could get on the high side on one game, so I could get the twenty dollars and I could get the two dollars. I could get the five dollars and the five dollars. So sometimes when this goes high, the other one goes low. They're not all going high or low together. That's what independence really means. So it's not too shocking that our measure of variability of the sum of these things is actually substantially less than what I would get if I added, remember, the $6 and the $147. That would be $7.47, okay? But is there an equation to be had? Well, certainly there is, because all I do is I look at this equation, the variance is adding, and I just express that in terms of the standard deviation. The standard, the variance is the standard deviation squared. And so what I get is something that's reminiscent of Pythagoras. 
is that those standard deviations obey what looks like the Pythagorean theorem. And there's lots of, there's really cool, cool reasons for that. There's kind of secretly a sort of geometry in here that there really is a triangle, a right triangle here. And, but it's just nice to think of it as an analogy on our level, that the square of the standard deviations become the square of the standard deviation of the sum of the two random variables. Okay, so you can look in the book um, for more um, information along these lines of formal properties that are satisfied by expectation and standard deviation. But I wanted to make sure we at least saw this come out of the numbers and out of a very low-tech analysis.